so we should be live in the group and we're recording so everything's good to, to go um thank you for joining me today daniel i appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to hop on and have this conversation about you know exercise and diet and how the two kind of really go together and the implications that both can have but um thank you before we get rolling into the the whole conversation. Um, Danielle, I am really curious how you got into this, this space of working with women in that particular area. Yeah. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Second of all, um, I it's been a, a long and crazy road, <laughs> to say the least, which I'm sure most people who have been on a fitness journey for quite some time will agree with that. But um, I have always lived a healthy life. Like that was something that was instilled into me through my parents. Um, but I got to the point in college where I wanted to lose weight mm -hmm. and I did everything that was unhealthy. Um, I did all of the things, well, what we know as unhealthy, but some people seem as they see these things as like normal. Um, and so I literally told myself, I was like, okay, if I want to lose weight, I'm going to eat salads for every meal. And I was miserable. I hated it. And I cut out like all of my favorite foods. I would literally sit in class and like daydream about food. I was also, yeah, I was also trying to intermittent fast at the same time. So I was like literally sitting in class thinking about food 24 seven. I was super nervous to go anywhere and eat anything because I was like, this is going to put me over like my intake for the day. And I'm, I don't want to gain weight. So um, I was super insecure with my body and I hated my stomach. That was the one thing that I like wanted to change so bad. Um, and I, again, like I was saying was miserable and that didn't get me anywhere. You know, I didn't actually lose weight doing that because I stuck with it for like four weeks, if that, um, and I didn't lose weight. I was miserable. I hated it. And, um, I realized that later on, I realized like, this is not a healthy way to go about reaching my goals. Um, and I then from that point until now have dedicated my life to like learning how to properly reach my own goals and also help other women through these similar things that I experienced as well, because I see it so frequently where women just under eat and or force themselves to not eat because of these things, because of these goals that they have, because they want to feel comfortable in their bodies. So um, that's kind of a little bit about me and my story. Yeah, no, I wondered if it was something, something like that, because I feel like normally we get into the space that we're in because it's super relevant to us. And, um, right. and you know, we run with the science piece and we're like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, wow. If I only would have known. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But that's what we're taught is restriction, restriction. And generally with the restriction right. along comes, you know, move more. So add more exercise. Were you exercising right. during that time too? Yeah. So what I did was, um, I was lifting weights and I, so I knew the importance of lifting weights at that time. I was like, I know this is something that I want to be doing. I want to, you know, gain muscle. Um, but when I was like, I want to lose fat too. I was like, okay, let me just tack on like 30, 45 minutes of cardio to my hour long workout. Yeah. yeah. And I hate cardio, hate it. So doing that was like, it was like pulling teeth. For me to do that and I also like afterwards was like so I'm in the gym for like two hours this sucks like okay. I'm destroying my body and doing things out of hatred for my body which was just like so miserable yeah I totally totally get that like there is there can be a time and a place to have that type of, of a season in the right. journey of fitness but that you are 100% right you cannot live like that Right. And, and that's a good point that you made too, is like there's seasons. And I mm -hmm. see this so frequently with the people that I talk to, um, like if they're super stressed and they're not doing all of the things that they feel like they should be doing, um, they have these really high expectations for themselves and they can't reach those expectations. And then they fall off track because they're beating themselves up about it. But if you mm -hmm. recognize this is just the phase of life that I'm in, it's not like this is going to be my whole life. You know, it's not like I'm never going to see progress. It's just right now I'm really stressed. I can't do these things. Um, and like you're saying, you know, sometimes there's a time in your life, like if you have a competition or some sort of like, maybe you're a marathon runner where you're going to introduce these extra workouts and stuff like that. But um, for overall longevity, you have to understand that there are phases in particular spaces and times in your life when these things are important. 
Right. Absolutely. I think um, we have a lot of ladies that have joined us on Facebook. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the chat. We'll make sure we get those answered for you. Um, but I've seen in working with hundreds of women is that often women go into these seasonal things. They prepare for a marathon. They're going to do a triathlon. They want to do a, a bodybuilding show and they decrease intake at that point, which is so yeah. absolutely counterproductive to what they're trying to accomplish. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand that if you want to perform, you have to fuel your body to perform. Okay. Like that is not the time to be restricting and putting your body into this state where it's prioritizing, like, um, burning as little as possible, you know, it's prioritizing essential functions and making sure that you're not, you know, that in that space, you can't really perform that well. You can't really mm -hmm. ask yourself to do a lot because you're just, you don't, you just don't have enough nutrients to pull from and to get your body to that place to where you're able to like really see your maximum potential. Right. That's 100% true. And I think that kind of really leads into like, what happens when women do put themselves in that space where they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're dieting, but then they've, they've ramped up the exercise because there's, there's yeah. so many physiological processes that happen negatively. Right. There's like so, so many bad things, <laughs> so <laughs> much bad that can happen, especially if you do it for like a prolonged period of time. And yeah. I think one of the most important and one of the most, I would say, like prominent for people to recognize is like the progress stops. So mm -hmm. the progress stops at some point. And that means that your metabolism has likely adapted to what you're doing to it. So like these low calories that you're feeding your body. Um, and at that point, not a lot of people know that they need to increase their calories, that they need to eat more. And that seeing progress is actually going to come from eating more. And that's really very much against like popular beliefs because we're always told eat less, move more. You're going to lose weight, eat less, move more. Like this is how you're going to get to your goals. So going against that is very like taboo. Um, and it's hard for people to recognize like that's where you'll see more progress and that's how you speed up your metabolism. So um, I think that's a, a big factor is like your metabolism gets kind of not necessarily destroyed because, you know, it can always be fixed, but it gets kind of shot. So you decrease it quite a bit. That's so true. It does. It goes against everything that everyone thinks that they know. Yeah. Right. But along with metabolism, there's other, you know, hormonal functions that can get dysregulated. Um, I know I see it more like in the bodybuilding world because you are, you know, doing things that are extreme, but that is not how people live or at least they shouldn't. Right. Be. Right. Yeah. I mean, and you get to the point where like, we're talking extreme, extreme, like you lose your period, your cycle, um, and your hormones are massively impacted with that. I mean, I even have some clients who are just everyday life. Like their goal is to lose weight and, and build muscle. They're, they're not trying to do any sort of competition, but they've lost their period yeah. because of this, because yeah. of these things that they're doing to their body. And even like hormonal dysfunctions, like PCOS, endometriosis, um, insulin resistance, thyroid conditions, like all of these different things can be impacted by a long-term stress on your body from under eating and overworking your body. Oh, 100%. Yeah. We see that all the time. And, yeah. and then it, it can be so challenging because people come in and you can assess and you can see what's going on, but they're like, fix me right now. The weight has to come off <laughs> yeah. now. And yeah. it can't, if it could, it would have because of the amount of right. exercise that you're doing, the little amount of food that you're eating. So you have to bring your body back to a place of um, restoration. That's, that's what we, you know, use the phrase a lot inside of our program is you have to restore metabolism. You have to restore hormone function in right. back to balance so that the weight can come off. Right. And that's like we were saying, really really hard for people to come to terms with because mm -hmm. these are people who wanted the weight off like 20 years ago, right. you know, like that, that was the best time for them to lose weight 20 years ago. So they have these very deeply ingrained beliefs and dislike about their body and these negative beliefs about their body that you have to work on shifting those too, as well. Like that mindset piece, you have to work on shifting those just as much as we're working on like getting your body to this healthy place. And it's really hard to get women to understand that we have to get to this healthy place before we actually go into fat loss. So 
um, that's a really big challenge in itself. And I think it's tough for, for people to understand, like you've done a lot of damage to get here. Like Mm -hmm. you have to recognize you have been doing years and years of bad dieting, chronic dieting, over-exercising, et cetera. Like you've done a lot to get to where you are now. So it's going to take a lot longer than what you think to actually get to the place where you want to be. Oh yes, 100%. But I think it's also really important to note that again, it's a season. We're not asking you to right. you know, keep the uncomfortable weight forever. We we know we can get it up 100%. Just give us the mm-hmm. necessary time to be able to, you know, restore the balance to your body, get you to a healthy place. And then honestly, the weight comes right. super similar to like the very first time you ever went on a diet. Right. It's so much easier. And that's it's something I tell my clients all the time is like, these feelings that you're having, they're temporary. Mm-hmm. You are not going to feel this forever. And I think that's where people get so stuck is they felt like this for so long mm-hmm. that they feel like this is just forever. Like I am forever going to feel like crap in my body. I'm forever going to hate my body. I'm forever going to not like my weight. I'm forever, never going to lose weight. So they get so stuck in those feelings. And I'm, you have to try to convince them and tell them like, this is temporary. I know you will eventually get to weight loss. What you're feeling right now, we are going to get over this. Like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's another really important process of like helping our clients understand that and how it really is temporary. Like you, you will get to seeing progress. Right. And we define progress so differently too, right? Like (laughs) progress is not simply just weight loss, right? Like we, we see as coaches, we see so many different pieces of progress with our clients and they're like, I'm not losing weight. I'm doomed. Like I'm not seeing any progress. I'm like, hold, hold on. Let's list all of the things you've accomplished that have nothing to do with losing weight, which is so important to recognize as well. Right. It it really is. Um, I think sometimes, you know, they can get to the place where they're old. They're like, yes, I know my gut's better. And yes, I sleep better. And yes, my cycle's more regular or, or like, we're not having hot flashes, but I'm still, you know, overweight. And um, yeah. it, it can be hard. And it goes back to that mindset piece of you have to retrain your thought process and yeah. it's, it's just, it's challenging, but I think it's important to note that you're not the only person feeling this way, like at all. Yeah. I can guarantee you there's, if people are working with coaches that are good, there are hundreds and thousands of women that have the same kind of feeling. So you're not alone. And if you have a good coach, you're going to be guided through the process and be able to come out on the other end, having a successful right. journey. Right, exactly. Yeah. And having that, that community is, is so important as to surround your pe- yourself with people who are going to like lift you up. I do say there's a difference between support and accountability, like support Mm -hmm. is like your Facebook group, you know, the people, your friends, your family, those people who are going to lift you up and cheer you on, but they're not always the ones who are going to be challenging you. So it's important Mm -hmm. that you have that accountability system as well, which is where a coach comes into play because they're going to be the ones who are saying, Hey, you know what? Maybe that wasn't the best decision. Maybe we should do something else. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to push you, even though you don't want to work out, I'm going to push you to work out. Right. Even though you don't want to increase your calories, I'm going to push you to increase your calories because I know it's best for you. Whereas like your significant other might be like, "Eh, yeah, I don't want to work out. Let's not go to the gym, you know? So (laughs) it's important to have both of those. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a, such a great point. Um, So with the the women that come in that you work with, it sounds like they're in super similar situations to most of our clients and most of, you know, who's probably going to be listening to the replay of this. Um, If someone was coming in and they're in this place where they've, you know, dieted for a long time, they're exercised for a long time and they're very, very stuck um, and they choose not to work with you, what is your advice to them going forwards? Mm, That's a really good question because um, first of all, I'm such a firm believer in like just giving and giving all of the advice and information that I can, um, and free stuff away all the time. And like, take all the resources. I want you to reach your goals. If you don't need me, that is wonderful. That's a win in my books. Um, but if someone is, has been chronic, well, the first thing that we need to do is really assess like where you're currently at right now. Like, are you a person who has been under eating for years, ages? You know, are you a person who has been massively restricting your calories? So that's something that I have my clients do. 
and people that come into my community, the very first thing I tell them to do is track their calories. Um, and I don't say aim for a goal because that's where we can, things can get a little um, rocky and you're not aiming for a specific goal. So for that first week, I say track your calories without changing anything. That's going to give you an understanding of what your baseline is. We're going to compare that with your calorie goal or your, your maintenance, like where you should be. And then that's going to give us some direction of what you need to do from here. So from there, most of the time it's, you need to reverse diet. And so then I walk them through, this is how you go through a reverse diet. Um, and that's, I do that for everyone. I mean, I give free calorie calculations away all the time. So um, that's the biggest thing I think can be like a, a really big eye opener is tracking your calories without changing anything. And then using that, your maintenance, your actual cal calculated calorie intake to mm -hmm. see, like compare those two and see this is where, why I haven't been seeing progress. Right. Yes. No, I think that's super valid because often people think they're eating one amount when they're actually eating yeah. another amount. So having that actual data is super valuable. Right. Yeah. And then when you go through that, I mean, I've had so many people tell me like, I had no idea I was eating this little, like I had no idea. And I had no idea I was supposed to eat that much. Like I give them their maintenance and they're like, you're what? 2,400. I'm sorry. What? I'm supposed to eat that much. I'm like, <laughs> yes. It's, and this is here we're here and what lies the issue. Like, this is why you haven't been able to lose weight because your calories are so low and they have been so low for so long. Um, and that's, you know, anytime you eat outside of these low calories, you gain weight. That's why you feel like every time you look at food, you gain weight. Mm -hmm. And that's because okay. of your metabolism. So um, it's really cool to see. And I think it's a really like, a lot of people are like, uh, calorie tracking, I don't want to track my calories, like calorie tracking sucks. Um, but I think it comes from a place of restriction. Like most people, when they go to track their calories, they restrict, you know, they go right. into a restrictive goal. And it's really hard. It's really hard to track their calories when you're only shooting for 1200 calories. So um, instead of associating it, associating it with restriction, we're now like associating it with eating more, which is very right. opposite of what people are used to. So it's a cool process to see. Right. No, that's a really um, unique way to look at, at the calorie counting because there is the, you know, there can be pushback on counting calories. Um, and depending, you know, on how stressed the individual is, sometimes we'll just revert to, you know, if you're not going to track your calories, then at least take a picture of what you're eating. That way you can sense some sort of the volume that's going in. Right. You just brought up a really important piece of this whole equation, which is stress. Right. Yeah. Yeah huge, huge impact on your ability to lose fat and build muscle. If oh, your yeah. stress levels are high, you are, your body is not in the right place to do those things. Um, and it becomes really, really hard to do those things, whether it be from like, just the effects that stress has on your life, and or the effect that it actually takes and has on your body, like hormone wise. So um, huge impact. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, like a corner piece of, of what we do is working to get stress yeah. because the, the negative, you know, like you said, in, in your body, there's so many processes that downregulate and that change and the inflammation that happens because yes. of the stress. And if we don't control that, like you said, scale is not going to move. It's just not. Right. Right. And that's such an important part of the process for people to understand because that's when it feels like you're going and working against your body. And mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people get really frustrated because they're like, I'm doing all the things. I'm, I'm literally doing everything you can to see progress, but I'm not seeing progress. And um, it's like, well, you're also introducing a lot of stressful things to your body with your already very stressful life. Like I would say most women in the US are very, very stressed, very stressed. And yeah, pairing that with like these other stressful things of restricting calories and doing a lot of workouts, that makes it really hard for you to see progress. So um, mm -hmm. that's an important piece for us to talk about because like, you know, not a, not a lot of people do talk about it. And I think it's mm -hmm. um, something that does need to be talked about more. So right, very important. I agree. And then, and then there's always kickback too. Well, the workout is my stress relief. Well, it is, and it can be if you're fueling it, but if you're not. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think there's like a, a big distinction that needs to be like made with using your workout as almost like a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then also having like other avenues that help you de-stress. 
Like your workout should not be the only thing that's helping you de-stress. Mm-hmm. And it can, it can make you feel good, right? Like it can release those endorphins and make you feel like you're, you're making progress towards your goals and you're putting an effort and challenging yourself. But there also needs to be, you have to have a toolkit of things that are going to help you manage your stress levels. And if you don't have that toolkit, then you're solely relying on this. And when we take that away and say, Hey, we're not going to do as many workouts because you're overstressing your body, then that's going to just make things worse. So you have to have both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as far as like stress management goes, practices that we like to employ are things like, um, quick breath works or short meditations yes. um, of getting outside and going for a walk, not a run, just go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe if you have a yard with grass, we don't have those. Um, but if you do, yeah. like you can go out and sit in the grass, that can be super calming to the nervous system as well. Um, and even simple things like humming or singing or mindfulness practices can help bring stress yeah. down. I would say even too, sometimes I forget about this one, but like laughing, like oh, yeah. watching it's- like comedy type of things or just laughing in general, getting your body to like feel literally physically feel that happiness can be, it can it's like totally change your state. Oh yes. That's, that's such a good point. And so a lot of those things don't cost any money. Like you don't have yeah. to go to the spa or the salon to de-stress and decompress. There's so many things that you can do at home, in your car, um, in the bathroom, outside that don't cost anything. And that are so beneficial for calming that nervous system down. Yeah, you're totally right. And I mean, even even YouTube itself has like so many different like guided meditations or just like mindfulness practices. Like it's a a gold mine to have resources like that and just like listening to those types of things. I mean, when I go and sometimes I'll like look for guided meditations for my clients and I like go through YouTube and look, I'm like the most relaxed when I am like going (laughs) through yeah and look and listening to all these guided meditations I'm like wow I'm so zen right now like right. this is great yes. yeah no they really really work um yeah we've got um we have a yoga instructor that will do ours for us so we just record them and keep them like in a library for clients oh that's that's so good yeah what a great resource to have I think so she's amazing um there was something else I was going to ask you related to stress but it's gone it's gone um <laughs> But I think that, you know, that's a lot to to bring to the table as far as, you know, having some tools to, you know, identify where you are with your food intake. Like you said, that's super important. Yeah. Um, addressing that stress piece is super important. Maybe dialing back on the exercise and implementing a stress management practice is another avenue that you could take. That way you feel like you're still doing something. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, I think that, and and then like we didn't really get into the different types of exercise um, because there are certainly types that do have a tendency to you know drive cortisol up higher, um, especially if you're under eating. So something we could touch on you know real quick if you if you still have a couple minutes. Yeah, I do. I do have a couple minutes. Yeah, I mean that's a really great point. Um, things that are going to put your body in like the parasympathetic state um, are types of exercise that are going to be beneficial if you do have stress levels. So something like walking Mm -hmm. going to be so beneficial. Um, I do think that there, obviously not that I think, obviously there's a ton of benefits to lifting weights Mm -hmm. and um, building muscle and et cetera. Like there are so many benefits to that, but I also think that it can be a bit of a stressor. Um, And obviously like running and cardio and HIIT can also be a bit of a stressor, but you can let, I would say you have more control over like lessening the impact that strength training has on your cortisol. If you're introducing longer stress periods and doing a little bit less or stress periods, uh, rest periods. Um, And that I think can be, you have a little bit more control over that as opposed to something like cardio, running, HIIT, boot camp style classes, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And weightlifting, like like you said, I think, you know, the benefits far, far outweigh any kind of negative 
impact that you can get from the stress because you're really in control. It's not like hit. It's not like right. you don't have to move to the next thing like really fast. And, and often in between sets, if you're increasing the rest periods, that's going to help bring cortisol back down. That's also going to boost your performance in the gym. So instead of like trying to rep out your, your sets every 60 seconds, yeah increase that rest period, let your nervous system calm down a little bit, then do it again. Performance is going to increase, which is also going to help your body be able to move more weight, which is going to build yeah. more muscle, which is going to give you the body you're trying so hard to get. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, there's a difference between doing a like structured weightlifting workout and something that's like a mixture of lifting and high intensity, like I'm thinking of like, like beach body where they have like 30, 30 minute workouts, 30 minute workouts where you're using dumbbells. I'm like, that is not, that's not lifting weights. That's not going to be helpful in terms of building muscle, because first of all, you have no idea like how many reps you're doing, what weight you're using. Like you just don't have a lot of room to progress with that. And you have to be able to do that in order to build muscle and see progress with, um, increasing your metabolism and and increasing your muscle mass overall. Right. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And and along with beach body goes orange theory and boot camp and yes. all of the the classes at defined and all of the classes at the other big box gyms. Like pseudo weightlifting. <laughs> They are not designed to give you the body you want. I used to work them. I 100% yeah. know they are there to make you sweat so that you right. feel like you Right. Exactly. I mean, I used to work at F45 and I know like even working there, I was like, they, first of all, want you to go there like seven times a week. Yeah. Which is same. insane. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like ridiculous, insane. Um, and also like, it's just, it's too much, <laughs> it's too it much is. for your body to handle. It's it way is. too much, yeah. too much that, of, a, that, of a big stressor. Exactly. The cortisol aspect is just too much. You can't perform, you can't recover. Your body is just in a constant state of inflammation and breakdown. Yes, exactly. And that's not what we want when it comes to like building muscle and maintaining this for the rest of your life. Like when yeah. you're in that catabolic state, like so many processes are going to shut down and you are going to feel like crap. And there's, it's no wonder you're feeling like crap because you're literally just like destroying your body in the gym. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That was such a good point. I'm glad we dove into that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We have a lot of ladies um, listening. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll stay on for a couple more minutes. If you if you have any questions, drop them into the chat. I'll make sure that we get them answered. But I think that was a fantastic conversation. Like so many good points were covered. We put out a lot of good information, some practical tips you can start applying, which by the way, if you do start, you know, if you track your intake and you're like, oh my God, I'm eating this much, reach out. We can, you know, we can work things backwards and see where you need to go. If you start implementing some stress management practices and start feeling better, start performing better, we'd love to know. So go ahead and mm -hmm. drop those things. Um, if any of you are going to implement those, we'd love it. But yeah, um, I was going to say, you guys reach out to Clarissa if you need help. Like I'm sure she would be more than happy to guide you through whatever you're struggling with when it comes to calories. Like if you track your calories and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, reach out to her. Like that is what we are here for. And I know that she will help you, that she will guide you through the process and she'll give you information and tips and tricks of like what to do next. I know a lot of people get really nervous to reach out and they're, they might think like, Oh, they're going to try to sell me. No, we just want to help. We literally just want to help. Like we just want to help you see progress, reach your goals. Um, and we can't do that if we don't know if, you're struggling or if these things are helping you. So definitely reach out to her. She is there to help you guys. Absolutely. 100%. All right. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add, Daniel, before we sign off? Um, I don't think so. This was awesome. It was, it was. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was tons of really good information, um, super exciting topics that are just very dear to, I think, everyone's hearts. Uh, yeah. But I do, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Well, you all have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you next week. Bye.